This conference will now be recorded. All right, we went over chapters one, two, and four. We're now going to start chapter three. Uh, for those that didn't catch one, two, and four, um, this is the second time going through this curriculum. Um, I have my own style of which I went through as well. Um, but if you look inside of the Slack channel uh, for the RCSA Slack channel, you'll see the videos that were posted last week. They were posted on YouTube um, as well. So let's go, let's try to get through chapter three. Um, I probably won't be, I know it's late on the East Coast, so I, it's not Thursday. I'm gonna try to do 20 minutes worth of training and I'll finish up with the rest of it um, next week. But that's okay. Um, we we had a chance to chat, so I appreciate you. All right, so chapter three, managing files from the command line. Why is this important? Well, it's important because you need to manage files, right? <laughs> you need to know uh, where files are at on the system, how to find them, how, where they're placed, where does an RPM install uh, packages when an RPM which is our, the package manager, well, YUM is the package manager for Red Hat, which is going away to DNF, and that's what we're gonna talk about on Saturday, um, and it's been coming for a while. However, when an RPM installs on a rail system, when you do a YUM install of a package, it puts files in different places, and we need to understand what the file system looks like and the hierarchy of this file system. So I wanna go over that first and then we're gonna run into chapter three. So we have this up. Um, I'm gonna make this bigger. Um, let's see, view, zoom in. Let's make this a little bigger, right? And I'm gonna do, um, and you all let me know if this is big enough too. Uh, it looks a little small on my end. I think that's pretty big right there. All right, so if we do, if I CD, which CD equals to uh, change directory, that's what it stands for. CD equals to change directory. So if I CD to slash, that means I'm going to the top of our directory, a hierarchy of directories. So let me pull this up so you can see, because there's another chapter that covers this, but I, I want to cover this now. Um, Linux uh, file system, and, I, and I'm telling you, I'm talking out loud so you can get used to learning how to search. Um, Linux file system hierarchy. All right, um, let's go, let's look at some images. This is the simplest image right here. I like that, it's simple, because I can talk through it. All right. All right, so when I said I'm going to CD the slash, I'm going to the root directory. I'm going to the top, to the, take it to the tip top, baby. All right, so, um, when we're looking at this um, file system, we're, we're at the at the top of the directory. Um, in Windows, you have a root file system as well too. You also have a kernel in Windows as well. So I'm at the top of the directory, and under that, I have um, some other directories such as bin, dev, etc, user home, lib, sbin, temp, var, and then under those directories, I have other directories, which are across the board, I have a, a, a baseline of directories. So this is this is an older uh, file system layout right here that we see right here. So if we go over here and do a CD to our main, our root directory, and if I did an LS, I'm just gonna do an LS. I just wanna do a flat so you can see. You see I have been, boot, dev, etc, and so forth and so forth, right? You see some newer directories that, that have po popped up. Our main ones that I really want to discuss tonight um, are the bin directory, um, your s bin directory, your lib, lib64, opt, mount, 
prop, root, etc, home and boot. Now we'll get into SRV, uh, sys, well, we'll get those later, everything else but sys and SRV and run. All right, so the bin directory, and, and I, not WN, but not like, not the baby, but BIN, the bin directory is where we'll find our um, executable files, right? So in Linux, we have uh, what we call, if I echo dollar sign path, let me do that right. You see, I have uh, 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 an environment variable called path, and that that dollar sign path um, has a set of a set of directories that are in my path. So, if anybody ever installed Java or or something on a Windows box, and you try to run a Java command or you try to run a command. And it said it's not found in the path. That's because that your environment variable isn't set to 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 see this particular path or this particular uh, location. So home slash home student dot local bin is a is a path, and we can tell that by just doing an ls on slash home. And we learned last week if I do a double tab. It's going to give me uh, another. It's going to it's going to give me my options, and it'll auto complete. So there's student, but if I do another double tab here, you'll see that I have some what we call uh, hidden directories. That that the period in front makes it a hidden directory, um, and I see that it. I know there's a hidden directory because I have the dot in front of it. But you can see there there's there's my dot local right. And then it tells me under that I should have a directory called bin, but I don't know that. I'm just gonna do a double tab, right? Oh, look, it didn't, it didn't find that. So let's do let's do that. Look, see, I don't have um, slash home slash student uh, dot local bin. I don't have a bin in, in, I don't have that folder there, right? So we know that's not to be true, but we do know we have a home, we have a, a home, right? And then we have a student, which we have here. We did an LSO home student. And it says that there's a path under there. Uh, there's under student, there should be a directory called bin. And do we have a directory called bin under this? Um, nope, we don't even have a bin, right? Um, but we do have home and student dot local. And we don't have a bin. So yeah, we don't have a bin. So let's see something here. Let's clear the CDO to home student, which I could have done. I could have easily have done this. Let me see the attempt. I could have easily done just CD uh, tilde. That's going to put me back in my home directory of the user that I am, right? So, and let me clarify that for you. Um, who am I? That means I, what user am I? I'm student. And so if I want to know where I'm at, if I type PWD, I'm in slash home slash student. That's my home directory. So let me show you how you can use this if I uh, sudo to root here. And then I type PWD, I'm in uh, slash root. But let me see the over the temp and PWD again. That tells me my current working directory. I'm in slash temp. If I cd space tilde, it's going to take me where? Back. To, it should take me back to my home directory, which is slash root. And I don't. I, I can verify that by typing pwd. All right. And if I type who am I, it tells me I'm slash root. Now, have you noticed the pattern on the on the command on the not on the command line, but on the on the shell itself? It tells you right here that you are a student on uh, the machine called Workstation. And when I type "Who am I?", I see that I'm student. Same thing, same thing down here. I am root on Workstation, and when I type "Who am I?", I'm root. So I, I got two ways to tell who I am. 
without using who am I by looking right here at what user at on what on whatever particular instance or VM. And I could verify that by typing who am I? And I could take one step further and say, where am I, right? PWD giving me my current working directory. Now I'm gonna clear my screen and then I'm gonna exit and I'm gonna be back at what who what who am I right now? What user am I right now? Somebody type in the chat and tell me what user am I right now. Right. I'm student, right? And you know that from what? Just looking right here, seeing that student, but you can also figure that out by typing uh, who am I? I'm student, right? So we're, we're moving around on the command line. Um, I'm not at the root directory. How do I CD to my root directory? How do I change directory so that I can go back to, to slash, not slash root? But that, that's going to get me home. I can type CD. You see, it put me right there where I'm at, right? So, but I need to type CD slash, right? You see that it changed right here, right? Took me back to the root directory, right? If you want to go home, yeah, I can type CD slash home and then LS, and I see that I have two directories there, right? Um, it, it, this is just fun, fun for food for thought here. If I just do a ls minus l, you can see I have, have uh, DevOps as a directory over here. I have student as a directory here, but look who owns those directories. This is how we know the ownership. This is the user. The first one is the user. The second one is the group. This is the user. This is the group. So DevOps belongs to a user named DevOps and a group named DevOps. And student belongs to a, a, a user named student and a, and a group named student. But here's the, here's the kicker on this one. Look at the permissions on this. We know by, um, we know that, um, I'm, I'm gonna just call it out Evelyn, uh, is this uh, DevOps? Is this a directory? Oh, yeah, you already know. You already know what I was going with. It's a directory. And how do you know that it's a directory? That's right. All right. So here's the thing In Linux, we have these things called permissions, just like you do on your Windows box, right? Everybody, when you log into your computer, Right, and say you have two users on your computer. Say you have you, the mom, and a child. Your child shouldn't have access to what you do as a parent unless you're giving that access, right? So in this case, we have some permissions that we can use that prevents or allows, or allows and prevents access to the contents in that directory. In our case, what we have here is every three of these, and let me let me highlight this out because this is not going to make any sense to you if I do it on here. Um, let me pull up Notepad. Oh, I'm not. I'm on. I'm not on Windows. Let me pull up text edit. <laughs> pull up text edit. All right. Let me pull this out. And let's put that here. Oh, it didn't take it. That's okay. It's even better if I do it this way. And I'll I'll blow this up too. Let me make it 48. So D. Um, stay low. That's why I won't do the space. Um, R W X, and then you have uh one two three. Oh, they don't like it. So we gotta do this one two, three, and then one, two, three. And this should be a lowercase d, all right? So what you have here um, for, and then we're looking at DevOps as a directory, all right? All right, so the first thing we know about this uh, particular 
um, DevOps is one is the directory. Um, and if we go back over here and look at DevOps right here, we see that the user and the group is DevOps. So we have two, we know the user um, and group is uh, DevOps. Um, but we also know um, that there's some permissions set up here. D, uh, I mean, I mean RWX, and then the rest are are empty. So we got to do a breakdown of this, All right? So we got RWX, and I'm just gonna space this out. I hate the autocorrect here. Um, and I'm gonna do. Uh, I'll change that in a minute. One, two, three. And then we'll do this, and then one, two, three, and we're gonna change you again. All right, so what we have here is user, and let's push that over. Um, user group. Center this song, and then other. So, what I'm showing you here is how the permissions are broken down. This where this D is stands for the directory. RWX stands for the users or the user that owns this directory. The group that is associated with this particular directory and then other meaning other people right uh, right now devops is the owner and the group right so devops is is uh we we'll put it here um devops is the owner and the group right but we got some permissions here so let's go here. Um, R, and sorry for it, making it capitalized, but it should be lowercase. R is read, and it equals our numerical number, or I should say our octal number is four. W equals to write, and that equals to two. And then X is execute, and that equals one. All right. So, Tamika, what in the world are you talking about? All right. What I'm talking about is um, this user has total control on what can be done on that directory. It has the ability to read. It has the ability to write and it has the ability to execute, right? So in our case, if we add all these up, four plus two plus one is what? Four plus two plus one is what? Not everybody add that up at one time now. <laughs> All right, four plus two is one and seven. Uh, let me get on my screen over here because it keeps erasing over there. Hold on, let me put that back. Yep, yeah, seven. So let me go down here and let's type in seven. And we're going to space this over. And zero plus zero plus zero is what? All right. All right. Oops. All right. So what we have here is we know if I'm a user and I am the, the user is DevOps, right? And the group is DevOps. As that user, I have total control. I have rewrite and execute but the group when we see those dashes i i don't have no control 
I'm just in that group, but I don't, I can't do nothing because my permissions, my read, write, execute are zero. So I'll put down here just in case people don't, don't remember means you have zero. You have nothing, right? And so on the other one, other, the dash, dash, dash is zero, right? So all the way across, the total permissions on this directory is 700 for permissions. So why am I showing you this? I'm showing you this because what we're gonna do is as the user student, I'm gonna try to CD to DevOps directory. What do you think would happen? First off, it can I do it, right? Let's go back to our permissions. What do our permissions tell us? As the user, do you as 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 am, is is DevOps a part of the group? Uh, I mean, not DevOps. Is student a part of the DevOps group? Well, we can find that out by do, just doing an ID minus A on student, and it says that student is a part of uh, the group student and will. So right now. It, it ain't looking too good for for the for the student to see me into that directory. So do you think that I could do that? Type a one in the chat if you think student can get into the DevOps directory. And type a two if you don't think so. All right, let's see. Now add, I'm gonna type who am I? I'm student. Now I'm a CD over to DevOps. Permission denied. Why was the permission denied? Well, what we what we know off the rip, the permissions are 700. I verified that the student wasn't in the group. We know the student isn't the user. We know the user is DevOps, and we know the user has complete ownership. And then we have other. So the student would actually fall in the other category or they could have fell into the group category if they were part of the group. But either way it go, they didn't have any permissions. So they couldn't do anything. Pretty cool. Got it? All right. So now let's get over here to the class. And let's look at some stuff. All right, so in here, their goal is to show you how to copy, how to move, how to create, and how to delete files, um, how to make uh, links, and then they have a lab for you. But first things first, the, our, our file hierarchy, um, and they go through this, and I'm going to run through this really quickly, but I just want to show you some stuff. Root um, is 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 at the top of the level. Um, ben and S Ben. What's so special about them? Um, ben is for regular users. In other words, uh, regular um, um, binaries that this the entire system would use. And S Ben would be a, a particular uh, uh, programs or applications that only the root user can use. Now, sometimes they'll link, they'll have a link uh, for some things that uh, regular users can use, but in particular, it's usually ran by root users. Your boot is just like what it sounds. If I don't have this boot directory, then the system does not boot, right? I, got, I need that, there are things in there that I need. So let's go look at that, right? So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear my screen and I'm gonna sudo to um, root, nope, sorry, do that here and then student. And then I'm gonna cd over here to root. I know I'm root because if I type who am I, you'll see that. 
All right, now if I do a LS, um, you'll see I have a, a bin and edge bin. But if I go over here to my boot directory, there's a magic that happens in here. So you'll see, um, and let me clear this so you can get a good view of it. You'll see I got a grub two, I got a init RAM FS, I have a system map, I have a VM VM Linus and a and, and a VM Linus rescue. That VM Linus and that VM Linus rescue are your kernels that are used when you boot up your operating when you boot up this operating system. It'll show you two uh, it'll show you two options in order to boot up. It'll say, hey, you want to go in the rescue mode or you just want to go into the regular uh, kernel. And you're going to choose regular kernel because you're not recovering something, right? You're not trying to save something. And then you have a system map, and then you have init RS, RS and grub to it if I. There's going to be more information about this. We're going to break this down a little bit more a little later. I just want you to know if you're ever booting up any type of Linux system, it doesn't have to be a Red Hat system, there's a, there's a slash boot on it. If you don't believe it, go grab a Docker container or go grab um SUSE Linux or Mint Linux or Arch Linux, any other different type of Linux uh, machines, and look at slash boot. You, you'll see a slash boot on all those systems. It has to be there, right? And then let's CD back up. So in order to CD back up, I CD and type two dots, and that's going to take me up, up one directory. If I just do CD dot, that's just going to keep me in my current directory. Does nothing. But so cd dot dot took me up two directories. So now I'm gonna do it ls again. Now your slash home, we just saw that. Usually when you make a user, and we can prove that too. So I'm gonna do user add. Let's do this first. Ls on slash home. Only DevOps and student are there right now. I'm gonna do user add tam. And then I'm gonna do it ls on home again. And you see tam there. So usually what happens is when I add a user, the user gets a an automatic directory created and slash home. That's what I use to that's what I use when I log in. When I log in, um my directory for, for TAM is mounted. My directory for DevOps, if I'm logging in as DevOps or if I'm logging in as student, gets logged in. Well, you ask yourself, Tamika, how do how does it know to do these things? I'm giving you more information than what they're giving you in, in here right now, but um, I'm going to show you why they know, how you know. If you VI, and I use Vim as my editor of choice. There are other editors, Pico Nano, uh, Pico Nano, uh, Emacs, and so forth. But I use Vim. If you do a, a, a Vim on password or passwd, and you hit enter, and I'm going to use what we learned last week, shift GG. It's going to get me down to the bottom. Do you notice that I have a user down here named Tam? And you see I got 1002, 1002. I have a home directory of Tam and also a shell. So when I created my user, it went, it went and added this to this particular file. It went and added this line to this file. It said this, there you have a user named Tam. They have a user and a group that got created um, 1002, 1002, and then her home directory or his home directory, however you want to look at that one, is slash home tam, and then they have a shell called Ben Bash, right? And um, there are uh, there are things that take care of this. This is out of scope for this class, but I'm since we're here, I want to tell you this. It's this file called logins.def. All right. And in this file, it's a port and highlight here. This UID min tells anytime I create a user, um, the minimum number that it starts with is a thousand, but it'll go check to see if another user got created. So we saw another user got created called Tam. So it bumped it. The other two users were already there, right? So it bumped it up to the next one. So Tam is uh, 1002. And it also does the same thing for the group. 
as well too. It has a min of 1000 as well too. So it bumps up to whatever the last user was, it'll bump up to the next to the next one. So let's 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 see if you get this. I'm going to do user add um let's just do uh tam2. Now, um in the chat, what do you think the next the number would be for that user in that group for tam2? If it's just bumping it up to the next one. What do you think that is? So UID, or I should say ID of dash A of TAM. TAM is 1002 and one and 1002 for the user in the group, right? So it should be 1003 for TAM 2. So let's do, let's check that. ID A TAM 2. Let's see if, you, if your answer is right. 1003, 1003. So when I do a user add of TAM4, what do you think the ID, the user and the group ID is? 1004, so ID-A TAM4. All right, now what's cool about this, you can set this if you wanted, wanted to, you can set it to a, a particular number if you wanted to, but we'll get into that later. But let's get back to the class, the CD back over here to that. No, they won't always be the same. And, and just because we didn't we didn't do and we'll get into this later. If I do a man on user ad, right? Remember the man pages. Share friend. I have in here, um, if I wanted to change the home directory of that user, this dash D, I could say when I do user ad, don't put the home directory in slash home, put it in slash home being dur or wherever I want it to be. Oh, by the way, um, I don't want the person to have the next, to be a part of, uh, of, of its own group. I want it to be a part of the DevOps group. So I'll pass the dash G and say, add you to that particular group. Um, so I don't have to take the defaults. I can manipulate um, this remember before, and this is something we talked about last week. Um, when we say user add here, user add is the command. Um, anything be, that has options are the options, and then the argument. So what I'm what am I talking about? Clear. Let's use the up arrow. So user add is the command. I have options that I didn't use, like I used the dash C, the dash G, and let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's do, uh, let's do five, and let's do dash C, and let's say new, new tab five, and then tab five, right? So now let's go in here, because uh, let's go back. I have a I have a command. I used an option, and then here's the argument. So it is the command. Oops, come back. The command, the option, and that option requires some things, and then the argument. So now, if I go look at, let me do a tail. Because you could do a tail on a on a file without opening it. Tail dash the last five. Let's do the last three lines of etc password. Now look, tam five increment it to the next one, one thousand five. But look, here's my comment: new tam. You can see the other ones. I didn't have a comment, so it it didn't get those. Cause I didn't, I didn't use that option. And then it gave me my home directory and then my shell, right? So that's what they're showing you here. The argument, I mean the command, 
the option and then the argument, right? On how to add a user. So it don't always have to be the same number. All right, so let's get down here. It said uh, the root directory is at the top of the file system uh, slash it's what it is. But your ETC directory is what I really want to talk about. Your ETC directory is your configuration directory. That's where you're going to find how to configure a web server, how to configure your firewall, how to configure. Um, we saw password WD was in there. Um, it, it, it is the, it is the it's, it's, it's your baby. It's just as important as the boot directory because it tells you how things should be configured on the system, right? So ETC is important. All right, so here they're talking about um, static content remains unchanged, dynamic variable persistent content remains after reboot. Oh yeah, I'll go over that. We won't have to worry about that for right now. All right, slash user. Uh, this is what they're showing here, software, shared libraries, read only programs. So they got user commands, see, under under the bin directory. Um, SBIN is system administration commands. Usually that's ran by your root. And then locally common, customized software some people use slash op uh, and some people use sl sl uh, slash user slash local here is your configuration files like i said now var is another important one this is where you find your log files and so forth so let's go over here to var and have a look and let me clear my screen and then do ls so in here if you went into the log directory if you go cd slash var slash log and then do an ls we got we got uh processes that run that generate these log files so if you had a failed login attempt if you had a, a, a failed message of a server starting or something like it's if the way it's configured the application uh, we can find that on the etc and it will point over to here to say, hey, create me um, some log messages over at var slash log. And you want to be standard. You want to keep to the standards when you're doing these things, when you're creating your applications. Um, slash run, runtime data for processes started since the last boot. This include process ID files and log files. It said the directory co consolidates var slash var run and slash var a lot from earlier versions. So we used to have these two. That's why I said oh, that other picture was an older picture. We used to have these two, but now everything, uh, these two have gone away and they're throwing them under slash run. Runtime data for process for the processes started since the last boot. This includes process ID files, lot files, and among other things. Uh, contents of this director are recreated on reboot. So every time it reboots, it's going to generate this again. We've been playing around with the home directory. We know about the U, the root directory because we played around with that. And now here's our temp directory. Our temp directory, again, gets changed and things get deleted every 10 days. So if you're going to create a new user, make sure you don't put their home directory in, in slash temp because when after it reboots in 10 days, all this stuff is gone unless you have a centralized repository where you store their stuff, right? Um, and then slash boot uh, files are needed in order to start the the boot process in order for it to, to boot up, and and slash dev is important too. Why? Because this is where things are housed at. Um, so when I say housed, um, there's this little thing here. If I do a df minus h, you'll see that I have a partition slash dev vda3 and vda2 one thing i know for a fact i shouldn't be getting rid of vda2 or 3 if i do i won't have a system anymore and you most likely will probably be fired if you don't have these things back up um so don't do that don't 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 type this command right here for fun just to see what it's going to do on a file system on your first day <laughs> that's your job all right, so VDA stands for uh, virtual disk. Um, if you had a 
say a, a SSD drive, it would be SDA. But because this is a virtual instance, it's a virtual disk. So that's how they, that's how you know if you're on a virtual machine or not. And you can test this theory out by spinning up a, a, a machine up in GCP as well. All right. So that's what they talked about here. So here in Rail 7 and later, four direct, four older directories in Slash have identical contents to their counterparts and user. Slash bin and user bin have the same information. Slash bin, I mean, S bin and user S bin lib um, slash user lib and lib64 slash user lib64. Why are these two different? One, because we used to have we used to have 32-bit operating systems and 64-bit operating systems, which means we had 32-bit drivers and 64-bit drivers. So these are 32-bit drivers here with the slash lib, and these are 64-bit drivers, and they're still there. Um, the goal is to really get rid of the 32-bit drivers and move to 64-bit drivers, but we haven't gotten there all there quite just yet. All right. And so then here's next. And now they give a quiz. I'm not going to go through this quiz. I'm going to let you all do this quiz. It'll be fun, but I'm going to let you do that. All right, so next one is uh, specifying, files, specifying files by name. All right, so they give you um, this hierarchy right here, right? They have slash home, and then Alice has some files. And under home, we have Alice, Bob, and Eve. And then we have a var directory with logs and messages, which I showed you, right? So they're talking about absolute, absolute paths and relative paths out here. And let me pause for a second. Any questions? Because I didn't ask that. No? OK. All right, so as you can see, as we're going through here, they're talking about absolute paths and relative paths, but I want to hop down here and show you uh, some of the stuff we've already gone over. Like, what does PWD give you? Does anybody, uh, for Ben, please repeat. You mean uh, Ben? Um, ben was uh, Ben and user Ben. So um, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's do it clear. And let's do it LS on Ben. Slash bin. We're already in root, but here you go. And then let's do an ls on slash um, user bin. Same thing. Now, here's a here's a here's a, here's something that you don't they don't show you. Let's do a diff on bin slash user bin. I got nothing back in return. You know what that means? There's nothing different about the directories, but I'm gonna make something different about the directories and I'm gonna show you something. So let's do a touch, hello, um, excuse me, bin, hello. And now I'm gonna do a diff. Oh, I didn't take it right away. Interesting. Let's see, let's do LS on bin. And I wonder if it has to be a directory. It shouldn't be. So hello is there. So let me go over to slash bin. And then let me do LS and grep for hello. And let me do LS minus L. Yep, and let me do that on, let me do an ls minus l on um, slash b. Slash, I'll do that. Okay, it must look at it as a uh, a binary. It didn't compare the files. It should have compared files, but let's do a man on diff. Diff is just like it sounds. Uh, Compare files line by line, all right? Let's see. It should have gave a difference though. Should have gave me a difference on diff on slash bin and slash user bin. 
I want to designate a, a refresh on the on the database. Let me look. Let me do that. Update DB. So I'm updating a file system there. Yes. So it doesn't like that. I have to come back and find out why it didn't find it unless it needs to have a binary uh, on being. But nevertheless, let's go back to absolute paths. I'll figure that one out and, show, and come back and show you next week why that didn't work. All right, so on the left, they're saying here's the browser view. Um, view on the left is equivalent to the top down, top down view on the right. So they're saying like this right here, it's the same as looking at it like this right here. Right. If you were at slash um, and you would see var and home are the same, and then under those, are, here are the directories. So this browser view that they're talking about, um, if we go here um, and we go back over to here and we come back over here to files, um, if we are at, I'm at home on my home directory, I need to be, I want to go up to root. Will they let me up to root? No, so let's see. Can I go here? Uh, well, let me go up top. Because I'm not root when I do this. I figured that. Let me see. Can I do slash home? No. Won't let me. I'll go home. I'll go this way. Yeah, this way. All right. So when they're talking about the file browser, they're talking about when you're browsing here, how things are laid out. Right now, we see that all of these are on the same level, just like you would in your Windows boxes. And if you dug down under those directories, you'll find other things, right? Right now, I have nothing under there um, because I don't, I don't have anything in these folders. Um, nothing in downloads, nothing in music, nothing in trash. And then I haven't been anywhere, so, right? So they're just talking about the file browser view, right? So now, if we come back over here, um, they're talking about absolute paths. So absolute paths are uh, the entire path that I gave, like I said, var log messages right here, right? For for example, an absolute path uh, mess for system messages, var log messages, that's the entire path, right? Um, but they also talk about, let me see if they have an example of um, a relative path, here we go. Like an absolute path, a, re a relative path identifies a unique file specified on the path necessary to reach the file from the working directory. So what they're saying here is um, from the working directory, say if I was over in var, right? the relative path to get to messages would be uh, ls log, right? And now I would see messages under that, right? So that would be the relative path, relative to the directory that I'm in, right? The absolute path, if I go back up here, to messages would be c var log, and like they say messages, that's, that's the absolute, right? That's how, var log is how I get there, but if I want the actual file itself, There'll be var log messages, and if and if I want the relative path, say I'm in var, if I'm in slash var, relative to that directory would be log and then messages. So that's the difference: the absolute versus relative. All right. So then they get into down here how to navigate. We we know PWD ls gives us what's in the directory and we can see that because we've been using that for this whole time so control c and i do a ls there's the information there and then uh, cd we talked about that change directory and then here they're showing you how to create files so touch is a way to create files so here they're saying hey in a relative path uh create a file in videos and name it blockbuster one OGG. And the same thing here, but suppose you were not in this home directory, right? As this user, you were somewhere else and you wanted to create a 
a file for and you're that user and you want to create a file in these in this directory here you will have to give it probably the absolute path because you're not in that directory so let me show you what i'm talking about so i'm gonna exit as the root user and i'm gonna clear my screen and i'm going to cd tilde this is going to take me home and i'm home because i know pwd tells me i'm a home student now if i do a ls here i have downloads and so forth so now i'm gonna say touch um downloads and i'm using my double tap to complete some file dot text that's my relative path but say i was over in temp and i want to create something in my home directory i mean in the downloads folder called some file two dot text so i would do touch i can use my tilde that's known as my home downloads some file two dot text this would be my absolute path now if i cd back to home and I CD over to downloads. And I do an LS. You see, I have some file two and then some file text. You see, you see the difference between relative and absolute PWD and LS um, CD are all the commands here. Um, we could do the LS minus L and LS minus LA. Um, let's clear. We've been using those commands all night. LS minus L gives you just the listing. If I use my up arrow, so I don't have to type again, and do LS minus LA, you see I got those files with the period in front of them. Those are my hidden files, and we talked about that earlier. All right. Um, here they're saying recursively down. So we, we don't know all this by off the top of our heads. Let's do a man on LS. So when you do a man on LS, you can have that that tells you right here the minus A, um, the the minus C to list columns, capital C, list directories. Um let's go up, drop down here to the R's here. Do, 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 do. Come on, R. So, okay, all right, look. So, reverse order while sorting and capital R, talking about R, Kelly, capital R is recursive. List subdirectors, directories recursively. So, let's quit and then let's do a LS minus R, right? Got us nothing, but if we did a LS minus capital R, you see it got us everything under those directories. And we know those are things under directories because we just created these two files under downloads. So we know it's giving us what, what, what we're supposed to get back. All right. And then with you see CD, CD tilde, well, I mean CD dash, right? It takes you to the previous directory. And then PWD, they're talking here, they're showing you previous. All right. So let's, let's talk about that for a minute. Let me clear that. If I do CD dash, you see it took me to my previous directory. And when I do CD tilde, it's gonna take me back to my home directory. So CD tilde talks about where I came from. So if you wanna go back where you came from, CD dash. And here they talk about CD period and CD dot dot. We talked about moving up directory, staying in the current directory. And that's it. I wanted to make sure we got through that. Uh, we have more, but I don't want. I want to end the class here because we're over our time, and I know it's late on the East Coast. So when we come back, we're going to finish up Chapter Three: um, managing files, creating directories, copying files, or moving files, and so forth. Making directories. I'm going to end the actual recording. This conference will now be recorded.